So the skin provides a protective mechanism. So anytime we burn a surface of the skin with heat or light, we are doing damage. So uh, we can classify burns according to degree. So a first degree burn only damages the epidermis. And remember, this is the non-living layer. So when we have a sunburn, what we're doing is we're burning away these first layers, killing those cells. And what we're going to see is a reddened appearance to the skin because you're looking at the, the dermis here that has the blood vessels. So you're going to see um, you know, a reddened appearance. So that's a first degree burn, a sunburn. It's painful, warm to the touch because of those blood vessels near the surface. <clears throat> and it will typically heal within a couple days to a week. A second degree burn is a little more significant. It extends into the dermis. So it burns part of the um, epidermis and the dermis. And as a result of that, we're going to see some blistering and more pain. So when you burn your fingertip pulling a hot pan out of the stove, for example, if you see blistering, peeling, that's an example of a second degree burn. A third degree burn is when we're burning all the way through the epidermis and the dermis and we're seeing the lower layers beneath the skin. So if we see fat, muscle, or bone exposed, that's an example of a third degree burn. And because you've burned through the sensory layer of the skin into the epiderm into the hypodermis and dermis, I mean hypodermis and muscle or bone, these um, types of burns may not be painful. So those are especially dangerous because you've completely lost your protective covering and those patients that have third and even you know more severe second degree burns over a large portion of their body um, are at risk for electrolyte and fluid loss and infection. So the only way to repair a third degree burn is by using um, a patient's own skin, taking it from other parts of the body, usually the buttocks and the thigh or the back, and placing it over those exposed areas, or sometimes they have artificial skin they can use temporarily, or even skin from cadavers or pigs. Again, there'd be more risk of rejection with those artificial um, grafts. So here's some examples. Here's a first degree burn, a sunburn. Here's a second degree burn. Um, we can see that the layers have been definitely removed. We see some oozing here. A um, little bit of infection looks like going on, but for the most part that looks like it's, you know, would be able to heal. You might see some scarring. And this is um, from high voltage, a third degree burn. Very, very significant. So when we're analyzing the extent burned on the body, we use what's called the rule of nines, which means if we can look at the different parts of the body, they add up to a factor of nine. So if both arms are burned, for example, that would be nine, and the head is four and a half percent. So if you look at one side of the body, if these, you know, the, the right side of the body was burned, that would add up to nine. So by looking at percentage of body burn, we can follow different protocols for treating those burns. Disorders of the skin that we see, um, bacterial infections infecting the uh, oil glands, that's acne, so that's just a bacterial infection of an oil gland. And as we see more oil production near puberty, as those hormones um, start to increase in the blood, um, teenagers are susceptible to acne. And you know, that's where good hygiene becomes important, keeping the surface of the skin free of bacteria, telling kids not to touch their faces with dirty hands, and you know using you know creams if necessary and some people even take an oral antibiotic a low level oral antibiotic to just kind of prevent infection for those people that really struggle with acne during um, the high school years there's a lot of a lot more things out there than there used to be years ago for people that struggle with acne different infections that um, viruses that infect the skin um, chicken pox german measles um, we can now um, get immunizations against these infections, which is good because sometimes these infections go beyond the, you know, just the outbreak on the skin and can infect the nervous system and cause, you know, inflammation within the brain and spinal cord and even death. But because of our um, immunizations now, we're seeing less of those complications. Cold sores are an infection of the nerves in the skin, so it enters the virus is the herpes simplex 1, the oral herpes virus enters the skin through a cut on the surface, typically the lip. Um, when someone has chapped lips, for example, then it lives down in the nerve and when the body is stressed or ill, that virus will become active Then it causes a, a large ulcer on the mouth and causes a lot of pain. 
aspirin, it can stay there for one to two weeks. There's different medications that people take. For example, Valtrex is a common medication people take to keep herpes um, from out from becoming active because once a person acquires the herpes virus, it lives in the nerve and cannot be destroyed. So we just try to keep it at bay and prevent it from activating on the surface of the skin. So for people with oral or genital herpes, um, some of those medications are helpful. Um, when you do research for homeopathic remedies for cold sores, for example, um, one thing that has some support in the research is lemon balm. Um, it has to, it comes in a in a tincture, which is a dropper bottle. And if a person has a new infection of a, a cold sore on the lip, if they put some lemon balm on there, sometimes there's been good luck with treating that and it not coming back. So there's some research you can look up on that if you'd like to about lemon balm. It's not a it's not a chapstick. It's actually a a liquid, and you um, can buy it in a health store, or um, look for it online. Bed sores, a fancy name for bed sores, are decubitus ulcers, and that's just when there's pressure on the skin. It prevents the capillaries. Um, from supplying oxygen and nutrients to the cells of the skin and as a result those skin cells die. And there's different levels of bed sores so it's important that we're always watching our patients looking for redness on the surface of the skin over those pressure points and making sure we're repositioning them every two hours if they can't reposition themselves. We don't want to leave them sitting in chairs too long or lying in bed you know with the bed the head of the bed raised where they're putting pressure on their, you know, the base of their spine up against the bed. Especially people that are older and very thin, they're at most risk for bed sores, especially if they have poor nutrition because their immune system is not functioning properly and can't heal as well as a, a younger, healthier person would. When we look at cancers that affect the skin, there's three major skin cancers. There's basal cell carcinoma, skin, uh, squamous cell carcinoma, and malignant melanoma. Of these three, the malignant melanoma is the most serious. <clears throat> it is um, it, uh, deadly because it metastasizes or spreads to other organs very quickly, particularly the brain. So it's very important that people check their moles because you can get new moles um, that develop that were not there before that can be malignant melanoma or it can be from a pre-existing mole that is suddenly changing in its appearance and we use the ABCD rule for checking moles which means um, looking at the symmetry like if this look at this mole here this um, has an asymmetric um, border so um, A means um, you know looking at the outside border and I'm sorry, A means, oh my goodness, now I'm forgetting. I'll come back to that one. B means border. So this has a an uneven border. And C means color. Does it have an unusual color? We can see how the it's a little darker in the center, lighter on the edges. That's abnormal. D means diameter. Is it increasing in diameter? This one looks like it has, you know, kind of like it's spreading out here on the edges. And E means elevation. Is it raised? And this is definitely raised here in the center, so that would be another sign that this probably needs to be checked out by a doctor. Sometimes they can remove it and catch it in the early stages, and a person will be just fine, but it's really important to check those moles. Um, another, I, you know, I can't remember what the A stands for. We can, you could look it up online. I think it refers to being asymmetrical, which means an uneven appearance to it. But basal and squamous cell, those are two other more common forms of skin cancer. These are increased with sun exposure as well as melanoma increases that risk. But basal cell is a little less serious than squamous cell. It tends to um, spread more slowly. So as a result, um, it's caught earlier and um, easier to treat than squamous cell. But both are easily treatable. And, you know, anytime someone has a little sore on the, on the face or the... Um, you know, neck, torso, definitely should be seen because you want to just rule out the possibility of skin cancer. Malignant melanoma, however, has a strong genetic component, and those with red hair and freckles are most at risk for malignant melanoma. And this is a picture of a pediatrician at Gunderson um, who passed away in his 30s due to malignant melanoma. He had a small mole um, in his beard that he didn't notice until 
uh, one day when he was trimming his beard, he noticed a little dark spot underneath his beard, and when he went in to get it checked, it had already metastasized and spread, and he passed away um, within a couple of months from malignant melanoma. So if a person is at risk, in particular someone with red hair, pale skin, freckles, that puts them you know, in a higher risk category for malignant melanoma. So they definitely want to be checking their moles and avoiding sun exposure. And some of the sunscreens just don't cut it nowadays. Um, for reducing that sun exposure. Covering the skin is the most effective way to prevent sun exposure. So as we age, what we see happening in the skin that we definitely need to consider when we're taking care of our elderly patients is the amount of collagen and elastic fibers decrease in the skin so the skin is less elastic it's more subject to tearing so if we have say for females if you have a wedding ring that has a diamond or any parts to the rings or any ring for that example for that matter that extends out could scratch your patient and cause infection so you really have to be careful with wedding rings or, or rings that have prominent pieces on them that they don't damage your patient's skin and tear them. Or if you're moving a patient in and out of bed or removing tape off the skin, it's very much at risk for tearing because of the lower collagen and elastic fibers of the skin. Loss of fat in the hypodermis, that causes the skin to sag and it also um, reduces our ability to have good cushion, so more bumps and bruises. Um, are seen in people that are thin, so it doesn't necessarily just have to be older, but anybody who's thin is going to have a lower ability to control their body temperature as well as um, have that extra cushion. Um, we see decreased oil and sweat gland activity, so the skin is drier, so putting lotion on the skin of our older patients is really important to prevent tearing. And because dry skin tears more easily. You might find that here in the winter time that if you bump your hands they're more subject to tearing with this dry weather. And with a decreased sweat gland activity they're less able to control their temperature. So the elderly are at risk for, for um, hyperthermia. When we get those really hot summer days it's the elderly living in small apartments with no air conditioning that are really at risk because they just don't sweat like they used to. Their sweat glands are not activated in hot weather so it's important that we look and be careful with our elderly patients with body temperature that they don't get overheated. And melanin production decreases so the hair turns white skin becomes more pale and we see abnormal activity in some areas of the skin with increased melanin production which release, which results in more moles and age spots. So that concludes our discussion of the skin and I encourage you to review the um, study guide as it relates to the skin and take the online quiz.